Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Sermando Talks. My name is Christina and my guest today is Mark Casey, founder of Mark Casey Networking. Let's say hi and ask him a few questions. So I'm here today with Mark Casey, who's from Los Angeles and currently in New York, and he's the founder of Mark Casey Networking. Hi, Mark. Nice to have you here. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Well? Super good. Thank you. In <laughs> one sentence, what is Mark Casey Networking? So networking is our main thing because not only do we do SEO and marketing for Amazon, but we expand ourselves to do so many other things um, and help other people. You know, let's say if we don't do the service ourselves, we connect them with other people. Okay. And what kind of services do you offer? So we do SEO and marketing specifically catered towards Amazon. So helping your products rank, helping your products be seen and getting out there and your goal is to sell well. And what kind of services do you stand out with? What makes you special? All right, so we offer many different services, but you know, other people that are could do it as well. But one thing that we stand out for that you know we do that we offer the optical users for is our ranking method. So we have a hundred percent white hat method to rank your product to page one for almost any keyword within a week. So what we do is we drive traffic to the listing and the different methods that we know, different strategies that we know that work, and within a week we rank your product without any giveaways to page one. And how long have you been around for? Around five years, I would say. Do you have your own experience with Amazon FBA? Are you a seller or have you been a seller? Yes, I've been a seller, but this just becomes a full-time job, makes you busy. So now more focuses, uh, focused on services and whatnot. Okay. So for Amazon sellers, it's all about money. How would you say, do you help me make more money on Amazon? So what we do is you, you utilize your budget and work with your budget. So we're not someone who's going to be like, you need $10,000. You come to us and say, hey, my budget's $5,000. We'll work with the $5,000. And why should I choose you over other agencies? Because you're one-on-one. -on -one. I even give out my personal cell phone number whenever I work with a client. So anytime they need anything, it's not like they're calling a secretary and being transferred. They have my personal contact and they can always reach out to me. Um, are you working for, uh, with clients from all over the world or only uh, US? So, yes, because a lot of people sell in the US marketplace, but we even, uh, our services are catered towards US and then UK and also the Europe marketplace as well. So our clients are global. So you have expertise in, in different markets. Correct. Perfect. Uh, can you name three things that your clients would say about you and your work? Um, trustworthy honest and reliable. And what do you personally expect from your clients? Because I always think um, that it's a cooperation when you hire an agency. So what do you expect from them? Uh, cooperation, brainstorming. In your opinion, what are the most common mistakes that Amazon sellers make? So a lot of people, so I know like everyone needs reviews to launch. It's very important, you know, but a lot of people, they make the mistakes of hiring someone from Bangladesh or hiring someone from overseas or whatever uh, to purchase verified reviews. Those are very dangerous because it's something very short term, um, you know, and, or reaching out to friends and family. Those are very dangerous methods because like Amazon could track that, that they're using a fake IP or, or shipping it to a spoof address and whatnot. So, you know, doing this flags your listing and it could be shut down for review manipulation. It could be a uh, flag listing and it's just not worth it. Um, the best thing to do is just find a network that can distribute your product. Like, you know, for example, we have our own network where we distribute your product to real Amazon sellers. So they're not just someone who's always reviewing. Um, and then they'll review your product and if it, you know, and they'll give you feedback and you have to run focus groups and whatnot. But it's important to make sure where the reviews are coming from. Just because it's a couple bucks cheaper doesn't mean you know it's worth it. What do you personally think is the best way to get reviews on Amazon? So there are a couple of different ways. You know, a lot of people, what they do is having a postcard um, in, in their product saying, you know, if you like it, please leave us an honest review or contact us and whatever. And that saves you from, you know, like having negative reviews. Uh, a lot of different people, which is something pretty new, is having a landing page, you know, where people can go to and uh, leave feedback on your product. And then if you really need, like I was mentioning before, is that, you know, you could, I mean, it's against services, but I mean, you could buy reviews or, or you could hire someone just to connect you with people who are open to reviewing, you know, uh, your product, which is not, you know, considered black, I would say, but just some people who are already interested in reviewing your product, you 
there are agencies, layups such as ours, who could connect you with those people. And then, you know, they could help you get reviews and help you with your launch. And what happens if I'm not happy with the work you deliver for we whatever work for, We work with each other, you're happy. That's what a lot of people know about us. Like, if you're not happy with whatever it is, we, and that's where we back a lot, of, um, a lot of our work with the guarantee. Okay. Um, how do you manage to stay up to date with all the changes happening in the Amazon yeah, industry? Every Let's day. Is like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With Amazon, like you wake up, one thing works, next thing, you know, it doesn't. So I have so many different connections, um, specifically towards the Chinese marketplace and Chinese sellers and service providers. Because they're, like I always say, they're a whole generation, you know, ahead of everybody with everything. So I have a lot of different connections there. As soon as something comes out, as soon as something's new, a new update or something, they'll reach out to me and be like, hey, Mark, this is new. This is, and then, you know, I'm up to date. I could offer it to other people at once, you know? Um, how does the process of working with you looks like? Will you do an assessment of my account first or... What happened? So, so since we have such a wide variety of services, it really depends on what you need. A lot of people just need like, you know, help like review optimization and stuff like that. So like, it would just, you know, people a lot of times know what they need and they'll just come to us and be like, hey, this is what we need. A lot of times people need help or advice or suggestions. So yeah, we'll do an assessment. We'll look at their product and we'll look at that. And we'll say like, hey, you know, you can improve your pictures, you can optimize your listings for you. Um, and then, you know, it goes from there. Okay, then we are already at the personal questions. <laughs> Why did you decide to become self-employed? So actually, I started off working in a in-house by Nine Fricker Seller. Um, I was working there as a regular employee and whatnot, just helping them with the review optimization, just helping them expand and grow and whatnot. So then I just decided to take all that work and everything I do and start it on my own. And I slowly built my own clientele. And then from there, we expanded and made it bigger. Becoming self-employed is risky, right? A lot of Amazon sellers are scared to go all in and put all their efforts toward Amazon FBA. What was your personal biggest challenge when becoming self-employed? Yeah, that is hard because one month, you know, it could be booming. You could do so many things. And then the next month, it could be like, you know, so quiet and low. I mean, it is a risk. But I guess, uh, you know, when it, when it, when it, uh, when it, rain, it when it rains, it pours. <laughs> How many hours do you work a week? Business, I say, is 24-6 for me, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm working the whole week. Oh, God. That yeah. sounds stressful. <laughs> I know, but I'm, like I said, I'm always available. I, I had some of my clients call me at 1 a.m. saying, like, hey, I need this done. You know, I just got a negative review. We need five reviews. Can you help us? Like, I'm always there. My phone's always on. People know that about me. But I can tell from your mood that you really enjoy um, your work. So are there also things that you don't like about your job? Um, I mean, it could be hard because since Amazon's changing ever so often, so we'll just invest so much time and work into a certain service. And it could be a week or two later, it doesn't like it won't even help anymore, it won't work. So, you know, just I mean, that's the excitement about it because you're always on the edge, you know, what's going to work, what's not going to work, what's new. Um, if you could have a superpower, which one would it be? Hmm, interesting question. I don't know. <laughs> Um, maybe being I, at several places at the same time this yes, is what I, I would wish for yes, that's a, I didn't think of that that's a very good idea yes I would do that I would do that I would give it, I would be giving a speech in, in one side of the world and doing <laughs> ranking on the other side of the world and <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you want to be when you were younger what did you want to become um, uh, so in this, I always had a business like mine. Like in my parents, I didn't even remember this. My parents told me when I was six years old, like six, I was ordering printers to the house. I was ordering stuff. I was like selling online. I was like so young. I remember like like my mother was was telling me when I was like 11 years old. Someone was calling the house and asking, "Hey, is Mark Casey there?" My mom's like, I just want to let you know this kid's 11 years old. Why are you calling him? Like, we have him as a registered business. So I was very business, you know, I was always very business-like, uh, you know, very business-minded and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's what I always like to be. Were you all already trading baseball cards back in school? <laughs> exactly, right? It was like, I was always like that. My, my, my little thing when I was really young was that, uh, like my parents asked me, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a cashier because all the money that comes in the register, I just want to keep. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that's how I was thinking. I was right always about money business, you know. <laughs> that's good. Then you already have the right uh, mindset. Yeah. Um, speaking of your younger self, if you could travel back in time for like five years, what would you say to yourself? Um, you know, never give up. I, would, I know everyone just says that, but it, it's true. But, and always be thankful. Because you don't know, like, let's say, like, like, let's say, for example, like, you had a business loss, right? But it could have been much, you know, much worse and whatnot. So be thankful that it was 5,000, not 10,000, and use it as a learning curve and just move on. Um, were there times where you wanted to give up? Yeah, for sure. There was so many times where Amazon was on a huge uh, review sweep, you know, and a new review wipe, and that made me so stressful. I lost so much money there, and a very big amount of money, but... You know, I could have ended it there or I could have continued and I chose to continue. And that's what gave me my big, you know, my big release. Um, with your business, how do you manage to keep your social contact? How do you stay in touch with friends? So that's what I, so I have two different lines. And people know this about me. They meet with me and say, hey, you have two phones. Why? I say, one's for business, one's for personal. I keep it very separate. Because like when I'm out with friends, if I have my business phone, I'll be like, hey, it's business. Can I take it out? I'm supposed to have one phone for everything. Then I pick up thinking it's a friend, but really it's business. And I'm stuck on the phone for half an hour. So I like to keep everything separate. How would your friends describe you? Positive. I say outgoing. Yeah. <laughs> You seem so. You seem pretty excellent. You seem like an extrovert. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you could give $10,000 to charity or some other organization, which one would it be? Something that involves learning because that, that it's like basically an investment. You're investing people to learn and then those people learning, they could start their own business and you know, make more money based off that small investment. That's nice. Um, what's your favorite place in the whole world? <laughs> Don't know. Somewhere with good weather. <laughs> That's important. It's very important. Waking up to rain and waking up to sunshine is two totally different things. Then it's good that's that you don't, don't live in Germany. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's why I'm happy. I live in LA. Uh, when I go back to LA and New York, it's such a big difference for me. <laughs> But yeah, I'm happy. That's good. Do you rather invest your money in material things or are you more the person that likes to travel and spend the money on experiences? Um, I'm kind of a bit of both. Like, you know, I, I like buying materialistic. I'm not materialistic, but like, you know, buying material things that like, because they're there, like going on a vacation, like it's a week, but like then it's done. But like, let's say you have something like a car or whatever it is, it's there. You always use it, you know? Yeah. Um, do you listen to any podcasts or do you read any blogs Amazon related? Um, I'm very updated. You know, I'm not such a podcast, like, you know, like not on repeat, like having subscriptions, but I would always like, you know, listen to different podcasts. Yeah. A couple of books here and there. Um, but yeah. Now to my favorite question. If you could hire a famous person to work for you, who would it be and why? Could be anyone. Hmm. I mean, uh, maybe <laughs> it's a little controversial. I don't know. Maybe Elon Musk is very, you know, he has different ideas. Like he has very, very like out of the box ideas. And, you know, I like. And he would probably give you a Tesla for free. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right. Um, then I'm already at my last question. Can you name three tips that you would give to any Amazon seller out there? Um, all right, in regards to like in anything in general, anything could be about entrepreneurial life in general or PPC <laughs> or SEO, just okay. three things that come to your mind. I'll do some, I'll do, I'll do them different. Okay. So number one thing is use your money wisely. Don't just spend and thinking, but uh, also keep in mind it's either all or nothing. Like a lot of people come into Amazon thinking it's like a half investment of, oh, I'll do a little here, a little there. It's like, no, it's either you're putting your full force and that's, you're going to get a good outcome or See that you don't do it at all. Um, that'll be firstly. Second of all, yeah, it's worth to invest money into pictures and into, um, you know, things like that. And like in your listing, invest in like, you know, invest in your listing as if it's like your product um, because that's what will help you with all the conversions and that's what will help you with, you know, creating a brand. And that's what, what I would leave off with. The third one is that create a brand outside of Amazon because let's say one day Amazon pulls the plug or you're suspended for review manipulation or whatever it could be, right? 
then your account is gone. You need to create a brand outside of Amazon just to keep, you know, keep that updates and going in case anything happens. Yeah, those are very good tips. Thank you. <laughs> I hope uh, our audience is uh, writing that down. Then, um, yeah, we're already at the end. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. And um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. <laughs> Likewise. Thanks again. All right, guys, that's it. That was my interview with Mark Casey from Mark Casey Networking. If you're interested in his agency, I put the link in the description. You can also find any other service that you may need in order to grow your Amazon business on sermondo.com. Check it out and I'll see you guys next time.